Oh my goodness, guys, I am really excited about this. We're probably not going to do a whole regular series on this just yet. This is really just a first look at this campaign. But I uh, haven't played Total War Attila in quite some time, and I'm not sure I've ever played it on this channel. Uh, but they finally have the alpha version of the medieval campaign for Attila Total War, which is something I have been desperately hoping for. Uh, I love this time period. I am really excited about this possibility. Uh, so we're going to at least take a look at this today. And I always like to play as England when I play medieval things. So look at all the available factions that you can play as. Uh, this is just something really exciting. So you start in 1212 AD. Uh, so this is an interesting time in world history. You've got a lot of caliphates available. So obviously uh, you've got uh, Muslim nations you can play as, you can play as Italian, you can play as anybody in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, or Sicily, the Kingdom of Sweden, the Teutonic Order, Tulos. Uh, so you can, you can just see what all is available to you here. Uh, I'm gonna, there's France right there. This has got to be England. Yep. So we're going to look at the King of England, uh, Kingdom of England. I think that's the way I want to go with this. Uh, so here you go. We've got the faction leader is King John. We are right at the very end of King John's reign. Uh, he died just a couple of years after this and was succeeded by his son, Henry III. Um, but this is very, very near to the beginning of the Plantagenet dynasty. They still own Aquitaine down here. Um, so definitely an interesting time. Uh, for the Angevin Empire, which is the Counts of Anjou, which was where the Plantagenet dynasty, they didn't call themselves Plantagenets. That's something we retroactively call them. They called themselves the Angevin Empire. So uh, we are going to be King John. We're going to start this campaign. Uh, the victory objectives, uh, you know, we're, we'll worry about all of that later. Let me look at the campaign settings. Advisor help high. Uh, limited auto save to the cloud. Absolutely. Battle realism mode. Uh, I think we'll enable it because the AI is notoriously horrible on this game. So anything we can make do to make it a little harder, I think, is going to be helpful. So um, let's go ahead and start the campaign and see what this is all about. All right, so here we go. So kudos to all of you who worked on this mod. Uh, I know it's going to be fantastic. I'm super excited about it. The Pope. As a Catholic faction, you must play a precarious game of managing both your feudal vassals and the clergy. At the helm of the clergy lies the Pope, supreme ruler of the Catholic Church. Appeasing the Pope may be in your best interest unless you're Henry VIII, but that comes in another 300 years, uh, as displeasing him can have dire consequences. The sign of a great leader is knowing how far your people can be pushed. Wars are significant, dramatic events that should not be undertaken lightly. All right, so... Here's London, we've got Bristol over here, got Nottingham up there, that's where my, my paternal line comes from the area around Nottingham. I've got Carnarvon, which looks like it's under the Welsh. This is, uh, this is in the time before the Welsh were finally subdued by the English, that, that'll happen in a couple generations. But This is really similar if you've seen me play um, the Total War Saga, uh, where Thrones of Britannia, uh, it's kind of similar to that, obviously, on a much smaller scale. But uh, you can see the areas we're actually able to see, which really only goes as far as Germany. We've got Wittenberg, von, uh, Braunschweig here, uh, Prague down here, Frankfurt. And then we can see Munich. That's looks like that's, is that Saxony? The Duchy of Bavaria, my bad, not Saxony. Saxony's further to north. Uh, Lyon, Orléans, and then down here is Bordeaux. That's our territory. And Toulouse, these are areas that we're going to have to make sure that we strengthen and hang on to as much as possible. Uh, so we don't have any kind of... Do we have any kind of an army right now there? I don't know, but let's this look at technology first. Technology. Uh, so this is where we can start doing some research. Uh, so research rate on stone castles is 110%. And you can see all of the available things here. Military order fort, military order castle, jousting lists, uh, composite lathes. So a lot of things to, to think about. Civics, probably where we want to start. 
And we want to start building our infrastructure up as much as we possibly can. Gothic architecture, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we've just got civic and military as far as research goes. Diplomacy, here we to go. Construct a proposal, double click on a faction from the list, and then so we can see some of the other kingdoms that we can work on diplomacy with here. As requested, uh, I give ear to your just and undoubtedly noble requests. The Count of Flanders, Ferdinand, very cool. Strength rank, ranking 55. Let's look at the strength rankings for just a second. So we can only sort by the ones that we actually have some knowledge or contact with. Kingdom of France, 7th. Uh, Holy Roman Empire, 22nd. That's Germany, basically. Kingdom of Portugal, Toulouse, Castile, Scotland. Uh, the Crown of Aragon, Principality of Wales. Where do we come in in all of that? We are strength ranking of five. So we're just ahead of France and more powerful than just about everybody else. I think we're going to put our attention on subduing Wales, first of all. As long as we can stay on somewhat good terms with France, which I think ought to be possible to do. Uh, what do we need to do to stay on good terms with Philippe here? Unreliable, progressive, and opportunist. He's currently a, uh, an enemy of Toulouse. He's got a vassal in the Duchy of Burgundy. So there's some options there. Here's a strategic overview, and that's where we were before. So let's we are, talk to France. Always, a welcoming host to you. I await what can we do with France here? Non-aggression pact would be ideal. I've got a moderate chance of success. It's certainly worth you. trying. They've accepted it. Yes. Thank you, France. But there is a so that's a good way to start things off. I very much like the idea of not having to deal with France, at least for a little while. Let's not get into a hundred years war, shall we? So we're going to start working on an army. We're going to work on the ability to support an army. Um, yarn hut, no. Mineral estate. A castle. I don't think we need a castle in Bristol. So I'm going to look around a little bit. So as you look at the possible upgrades for a city, you can see by going from what it currently is to what it could be, uh, not only the cost and the number of turns it'll take, but over on the left, it shows the changes uh, that will happen. So for example, right now my th food consumption is 30. If I go up to a provincial, or from a provincial capital to a large city, or uh, from a walled city to a large city, it doubles the food consumption. You have a hard cap on the population. Uh, you have growth increases. You have wealth increases. You have uh, additional troops made available in the garrison. Um, and then, of course, you're going to abandon a settlement or you can convert it. I'm not sure what you can convert it to, but we're going to figure that out as we go. Uh, but right now, what we want to do... Oh, there's Stonehenge. That's pretty cool. Uh, we want to look at our army. What kind of an army do we have? Raise forces, recruit agent. Uh, we've got decisions, found an empire. Uh, so that's not something we can do until we control 18 regions. We only have about a third that amount. Ask the Pope for money, which we can do if we have enough papal favor. Uh, objectives. We have an objective of getting a military victory right now. Trade and finance. Here's our tax level. Uh, our uh, Army un our upkeep right now is more than our tax in income, but we also have trade income and then uh, others such as diplomatic negotiations or tribute. Uh, so we're getting a bonus of 2700 in income right now, so that's good. Uh, we've got to watch public order with taxes. Let me go back to that for a second. Um, lowest public order is in York. That's not uncommon for England to have trouble in the north. A lot of the rebellions... Uh, that English kings dealt with originated in the north. It's kind of far removed. It's a, you know, almost a different country in some ways. So we got to look at research here, and I think, I think we'll start with this right here, uh, city charters. So let's focus on that for the next looks like five turns. So we've got. A plus two experience for bow uh, unit recruits. English wool industry is bringing in a lot of my finances, which, which was true. Uh, and what happened was uh, during, I think it was during the reign of Edward III, uh, the wool industry took a huge hit because the plague hit 
This was in the 1300s, and there just weren't any English people available to do the uh, to run that wool industry. So, um, all right. So, what do we got to do to raise an army here? Initiate diplomacy. No, we don't have any diplomacy we need to in initiate right now. So let's raise some forces. We've got an available general, King John. A lot of other folks available as well. Yeah, King John's going to run this force. Raise an army, King John. Warriors of purity. That doesn't sound like something John would do. Recruitment time is shown in the top left corner. All right, so this tab shows all the units or ships available. Uh, in the selected province, right click on it to see its description. All right, cool. Recruit units, let's do it. No recruitment options available at the moment. All right, hire mercenaries, no. So very little we're actually able to do this time around. So let's end the turn. Oh, I can still assign a provincial the governor. Oh, let's look at our dynasty. So not a lot to see here. That's uh, my father, King Henry II, uh, who was the founder of this dynasty. And then, of course, Richard the Lionheart was John's older brother. And now we've got John himself. Uh, Richard is my son and heir. That's interesting because um, I thought his son and heir. Oh, no. There we go. Henry should be the heir. It's interesting they're making Richard the heir even though he's older. Or even though he's younger. So we're going to change that to Henry. When you there we go. A faction, you also chose a family or party to represent. So we can assign four governors. I feel like Bordeaux's a, a, a prime spot for us to need a governor. Oh, I ended my turn. Ah, that was dumb. Okay, we got to sit through all of these different folks as now. We've got diplomacy remain, from the Kingdom of Scotland. He's offering 300 in exchange for a non-aggression pact. I, I feel like I could probably get more than that, but I'm planning on going after Wales. So having Scotland and France at peace with me, I feel like is going to be really important uh, to having a success early in the game. Because uh, those were historically England's main enemies were those two nations. So um, we'll get to Scotland and, and we'll focus on them at some point, just not yet. All right, whispers have alerted the king that nobles are conspiring, thinking him weak. The king of England must prove his worth and re uh, return prestige to the English crown. France has inflicted great defeats on the Angevin dynasty in recent years. Returning the favor would quell these rebels, if only momentarily. No. We're not going to declare war on France. I just made peace with France. Showing himself a coward, the King of England now must face his ambitious nobles. Yeah, he signed Magna Carta not long before he died. Uh, they have prepared a document which will limit the power of the English crown. To sign it would be the utmost humiliation. To refuse to sign would surely signal civil war. Yeah, that is something that John was facing. In fact, John was in the process of losing his kingdom when he died. Uh, so this will be interesting to see how this all shakes out. There's an army. All right, now we're talking. So this is a uh, pretty significant army too. So we're going to go ahead and merge John into said army. Now we cannot exchange commanders. Okay, that's fine. That's a pretty pretty significant force, and we're going to definitely take them out for a spin. Let's get ourselves into Note into some kind of conflict here. Moving everything into one so we'll start moving them. We're going to be right into the early stages of going after Wales here. I don't know how far we can go. Can we get all the way to Carnarvon Castle? Yes, declare war on Wales. The initial offer or demand isn't quite what you had in mind. So what do we have going on here? Wales. To enable further we have allies in Flanders and the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need the allies, and so I'm going to leave them off the hook for this one. All right. We're not going to be able to get any further than that. But honestly, just because I want to do kind of a first look at all this, we're just going to go ahead and end the turn. Uh, I want to get to this battle so we can see what combat's going to be like. 
All right, whispers have alerted the king that nobles are conspiring, thinking him weak. The king of England must prove his worth and re uh, return prestige to the English crown. France has inflicted great defeats on the Angevin dynasty in recent years. Returning the favor would quell these rebels, if only momentarily. No, we're not going to declare war on France. I just made peace with France. Showing himself a coward, the king of England now must face his ambitious nobles. Yeah, he signed Magna Carta not long before he died. Uh, they have prepared a document which will limit the power of the English crown. To sign it would be the utmost humiliation. To refuse to sign would surely signal civil war. Yeah, that is something that John was facing. In fact, John was in the process of losing his kingdom when he died. Uh, so this will be interesting to see how this all shakes out. There's an army. All right, now we're talking. So this is a uh, pretty significant army too. So we're going to go ahead and merge John into said army. merge armies or fleets. In order to assemble the strongest possible force. No, we cannot exchange commanders. Okay, that's fine. That's a pretty pretty significant force, and we're going to definitely take them out for a spin. Let's get ourselves into into some kind of conflict here. Moving everything into one force. So we'll start moving them. We're going to be right into the early stages of going after whales here. On the move. Ready for I don't know how far we can go. Can we get all the way to Carnarvon Castle? Yes, declare war on Wales. Faction's initial offer or demand isn't quite what you had in mind. So what do we have to going on here? Wales. To we have allies in Flanders and the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need the allies, and so I'm going to leave them off the hook. For this one. All right. At your command. We're not going to be able to get any further than that. But honestly, just because I want to do kind of a first look at all this, we're just going to go ahead and end the turn. Uh, I want to get to this battle so we can see what combat's going to be like. Trade enriches all. All right. A little uh, trade agreement with France. That's cool. We'll accept it. We're, I'm not going to be picky right now and counter offer these things. The turns go pretty fast. I'm actually surprised that with this many other factions uh, that it's going as fast as it is. So I'm pretty pleased with that. We'll see how it operates when we get into a combat situation with an army as big as this one. All right. Wavering loyalty. Robert. Rumor has it this man's loyalty is wavering. If we are to avoid civil war, we must ensure it does not fall any further. All right, and Eustace, same thing. Here's Magna Carta. All right, I may have gone to war with with Wales a little premature. Uh, if I sign Magna Carta, it uh, limits my powers as king. All right, we'll appease the vassals for now. John did sign it and then immediately go back on it, so... Ready for battle. I don't know what will happen with that. To We're going to lay siege to Carnarvon Castle. Will the longer a settlement is under siege, the worse okay. its physical condition. 2,000 men. Making He's got 1,000, but obviously if I'm going to have to go up against Carnarvon, which is a pretty significant castle, uh, we're going to probably want to hold off on doing that. Battering ram, ladders... Okay. Continue the siege. He may come out to fight me at some point, but I'm pretty excited about this. I want to see what this is going to be like. So let's just, you know, I'm not really doing this to play a campaign. I just want to kind of see, show you a little bit of all the features of this game. We'll do a proper campaign at some point. Oh, Wales is trying to buy me off with a peace treaty and 1,500 gold. I don't think so. Winning a battle isn't just about greater numbers. All right, he's got a thousand reinforcements as well, so this is actually um, look at the strength ratio. About as even as one can get. But beware. I'm gonna count on the fact that my forces are gonna be stronger than his now. Man, I have not played this for a long time. Um, God's Chosen under Llewellyn, who I believe is probably the Prince of Wales. We're just going to keep everybody tight together, hopefully let him come to me, 
Uh, he's probably going to have those Welsh longbowmen, which will be interesting to see in combat. But let's take a look and see what we've what we've got here. So out on the on the flanks, we've got our longbowmen, which I think I'd like to get up on this high ground here if possible. Yeah, let's put them there. Um, obviously, poor missile block chance, high ammunition, excellent rate of fire. Here we've got spearmen, which we'll definitely want to use against uh, any potential cavalry attacks. Sergeants, these are uh, medium melee infantry, 13th century. We've got English foot knights, more longbowmen, medium melee sergeants again, sergeants, longbowmen over here. Back here, mounted sergeants. Oh, look at the English knights. Don't they look, oh, that is cool. We got to get a good look at these guys because that is amazing. Uh, that, I'm really excited about that. That's fantastic. They've got their coats of arms going. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Do I see the Cliffords? This one looks like the Clifford coat of arms right there. I mean, the, the shield doesn't, but the uh, the covering does. And that, oh, because the Clifford's my family. So, uh, all right. Let me go ahead and get sorted here, and then we're going to watch this unfold. This is going to be fun to watch. So I'm looking at all the available kind of formations I can go with here, involving just sorting everything. Um, and obviously, I don't know enough about the combat yet. I haven't played this, so uh, I think we're going to go melee front triple line. Seems to work pretty well, uh, I would think. I'd like to kind of stay on this high ground as much as possible but that may not be really an option for me so this is going to put the cavalry in the rear which I guess will work I think I'd rather kind of keep them out to the edges so that I've got them available to me if I want to if I want to send them in at some point And this is my king's bodyguard here, so we want to keep them close by. All right, let's do this. Take time to explore the battle. Oh, he's over there. Or is that just his? Oh, those are his reinforcements coming in by ship. Oh boy. Look on the horizon. Reinforcements. I see him. Okay, so we've got to deal with that. Meanwhile, here come his his cavalry. Oh boy. Love the music. Yikes! Oh my gosh! Why are we taking so long? Oh, he's sending his cavalry right on my archers. Oh yeah, he sees him, so now he's taking off. Oh, these guys are just getting destroyed. That's King Llewellyn's bodyguard came right into the fight. Or Prince Llewellyn, I guess you should say. That's amazing that he would do that. Oh, this looks amazing. I can't believe Llewellyn's is riding right through my lines like this. getting at my archers now. All right, King's bodyguard it is. Oh, we just ran him off like he was sitting still, man. That was great. Oh, he hit my other flank too. Same thing with cavalry. 
All right, my general, I'll pull him back. We gotta watch not only his troops up there, but we also gotta watch this landing over here. Mostly archers, it appears. Hit him. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Not who I wanted to hit. I want to hit his archers. One eye on the landing over there. What a mess. Who broke? That was my cavalry. So his archers are alive and well and kicking my butt. Okay, here we go, here. Hit him before everybody lands. Actually, those are archers. So yeah, actually, it makes even more sense to hit him now. Why are we still going here, man? We should have had these guys done with by now. All right, we wiped him out. Now, let's go for those archers. Meanwhile, here comes the rest of the landing. guys back. Attack you worthless dogs. run off his archers there oh for my first battle on this this is not the way I wanted this to go this is kind of a mess but so far so good I'm a little nervous about this though hit him happening over here. 
happening is I got two units doing nothing. So we're going to give them something to do. Pretty well broken. Broken him over here. We're down to just 36 of these knights, though. Got to be careful. Get in there. Another unit broken. After him. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Gotta get used to the controls. Knights, finish them. Alright, overall, I'm not entirely sure how the battle's going. It seems like it's going well. I really wish I could just organize my forces a little better than I have so far. But it looks like I've got everybody running over there. up a little bit now. Get an overview of everything that's happening. Victory! Okay, cool. Let's see what it looked like overall. Uh, this victory, glorious, heroic, magnificent victory. Your foes are utterly crushed. End the battle. Huge victory over Wales. Uh, we took out over half his army. In fact, the, uh, the losses are greater than what he has remaining. And so now, even though he outnumbered me by a little over 100 men, I now have him by over 600. And so if we go back into combat now, I have one force against one force. It'll be organized. It'll be a little easier to deal with. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. And it looks like we're going right uh, back or right into uh, 179 captured. We could kill them. We could take on warriors, 4%. Or we could ransom and release captives. Uh, we'll take on the warriors. Now we've got another offer of diplomacy. Oh, this is from the uh, Upstalsboom League. Seems like a fair idea. Non-aggression pact. Now right, we're going to finish off Wales and then we'll call it an episode. Following a new agreement... A trade route has been opened. Llewellyn has been killed. A, trading partner. a noble Wales. enemy has fallen Your in battle against us. Fourth ladder in council. Economy. Let's finish off Carnarvon, shall we? Nothing I'm too worried about here. Let's see. Battle of Carnarvon. There we go. Casualties. Location. So that goes into our history now. The Battle of Carnarvon. Very cool. We have unassigned skills. So our General William, 
Their name and position on the plus map, one for cavalry unit recruits, plus one authority, this, plus one cunning. With details of household members or objects. Got to think about not only what it does, but what it will lead to. I think we'll go with commander. Oh, we've got more than one assi unassigned skill? Okay, cool. I'm not worried about the governor. I just want to win this and finish off Wales. Got some unknown troops there kind of traveling through Bordeaux. It doesn't look like any of them stayed. Develop a healthy risk. New Pope elected. Pope Honorius III. D ah, John died of natural causes right on time. So that's cool. So, yeah, Henry was, I, I think, was he nine years old when he became king? I think so. So we've now got a, uh, oh, attrition. 275 men lost to attrition. Uh, so now a new king has to sign Magna Carta. We'll go ahead and sign it, at least while we're still dealing with Wales. Man, I hate the idea that that happened. So do we have to continue the uh, the siege, I guess, here? We're still building our siege equipment. He's only got 525 men, and I've got 1463. So we could auto-resolve and just win it, but where's the fun in that? Uh, we've got some siege equipment available. Uh, I think we'll wait one more turn before we finish this up, though. Let them cower like kennel dogs. Uh, the Pope has called for a crusade for Cairo, calling upon all righteous Catholics to take up the cross. Why do we want Cairo? Does the Pope want the pyramids or something? His Holiness hopes the conquest of Egypt will provide a staging ground to retake the rest of the Holy Land. Okay. Thanks for answering that question. Here's the Holy Land. Interesting stuff. The choice now befalls you. Should you participate in the crusade, you may gain the Pope's favor and many riches, but sit it out and there may be consequences. Well, right now I'm trying to take Wales, so that's kind of my priority at the moment. 478 men plus 525 reinforcements. Let's do it. Let's fight this out. Okay, here we go. We've got current weather, fog, severely reduced visibility. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. that. The goal here is to capture the settlement, not destroy it. To achieve victory, either kill or rout the entire army. Okay. okay. So let's see what we're up against. Carnarvon. There we go. Oh, that's, she's a beaut. She is a beautiful... Man, I would love to be defending something like this. I can't wait for that opportunity. All right, let's do this. Fire at will for missiles can be toggled off. So we've got a lot of available siege equipment here. I don't know where we're going to be dealing with the enemy. How foolish, or the Lord Himself will not remember them. One day, possibly, a bored poet will compose a tedious verse about their fate. But today, we attack. Huh? We got villagers coming in, going all Leroy Jenkins on us here. <laughs> I guess we'll go ahead and kill those couple of villagers. That was kind of a neat touch, and I like the little kind of. Uh, battle speech at the beginning there all right so what are we facing not a huge garrison force really so we've got to go ahead I've never done one of these sieges before so don't judge warriors eager for blood, warriors eager for blood. So we lead with our siege equipment. Let's get some archers up there. Advance 
I'd be curious to see at what point he's able to start hitting me. This just looks pretty. It looks so beautiful. What do we have over here? There's something going on over here. It's hard to see because of the fog. I don't know if that's where his reinforcements are or what. What's my range at? Yeah, we can hit him from here. But they can hit me from here too. Obviously, I've got too many of these things to get them all up there at once. Why are these guys up here getting shot at? So we'll just start sending them all up that way and we'll see who gets there and who doesn't. Get those ladders going. I should have spread out a little more and come at more places at one time. Get up there, guys. Get up there and fight. How do we just drop the siege equipment and go? There, like that. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, hello. Didn't see that. He just, he landed his reinforcements by sea. Oh, totally didn't see that coming. I wasn't expecting him to land reinforcements by sea at all. Taking the castle without any trouble though. Yeah, drop the siege equipment and get in there, man. So we're gonna send you over here into this big melee mess that's happening. Beautiful. The men are pouring in to Carnarvon Castle. Well, to the town anyway. Got some guys way down here, some longbowmen. We'll take care of them. Okay, so he's got them stationed kind of all over the place. Let's see what's happening out here. We've got them kind of stuck on the beach. Alright, 
I think we've got it. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up right here. I just wanted to kind of give you that first look. And uh, I think we've well in hand got the castle taken care of. But let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, I'm gonna take some time to get to know the gameplay better, get to know how it works, give you a much better in-depth kind of uh, review of the game when I get a chance of the mod, I should say. Uh, this was just kind of a first look. I really have no idea what I'm doing. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. It's very pretty to look at. And there's a lot of depth to it that I'll have to take the time to experience so that I can give you a proper uh, solid review and maybe eventually a playthrough of a campaign. So let me know your thoughts on that and we will see you again soon with some more videos. Thanks for watching.